Amen. I'm, I'm surely glad to be saved. Well, praise God. We're going to get into the word. Amen. So let's get this hallelujah shout. We shout it, shout it down because we got word. Amen. We got word that's going to give us strength in this time. Amen. Come on. Let's shout it out. Let's shout it like we mean it. I know I mean it when I say this hallelujah. Amen. Don't let the devil make you be quiet either. Amen. You need to let him know I ain't going to be quiet. I'm going to be getting more radical. All right. Y'all ready to shout it out? Let's give a global hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Amen. That sounds good. Amen. That sounds good. Let's do one more. This time be even louder. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. He's a good God. Mighty God. Wonderful God. A God that is there for you. And a God that is there for me. Amen. You know, God can comfort you and me at the same time. And we could be in two different places. Amen. That, that's wonderful. I mean, I'm just so happy to have a God like that who loves like that. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. Thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Our hearts are open. Just write your word on our hearts that we grow by it. In Jesus' name, amen. Church said amen. Amen. Praise God. Lose your neighbor so you get your Bible out. Amen. All right, we've been preaching here for Wednesdays, um, the series entitled More Than Conquerors. And man, you know, I, in, in preaching this, I, had, I didn't know that, you know, God is building up a strength in us that we were really going to need. But, you know, if you just pay attention to what God is doing, then you will find yourself being strengthened day by day. Amen. Day by day, even moment by moment. What does that mean? God can give me strength moment by moment. I could feel weary in one moment and get strength the next because he's God. And I'm going to keep looking at him. Amen. We're going to look to the hills from which cometh our help. Come on. Our help comes from who? The Lord. Amen. We're going to keep looking. Amen. And keep looking, keeping our eyes on Jesus. Um, we've been once again preaching this more than conqueror series. Um, we're going to preach part eight tonight. And tonight the subtitle of this is joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable. And we have been looking at this Romans, Romans chapter eight and verse uh, 37. Romans 8, 37. We can look at that in the King James quickly, and then we'll look at the Amplified as well um, to give us the help we need. Amen. Nay, in all these things. Boy. I mean, I've been touching on this. This is week eight. So all these things means no matter what. Amen. No matter what. See, when when you understand that you're more than a conqueror, that means that you don't have to know how you just have to know who. Amen. So you don't have to know how. To fix things or how to get over, you know, sorrow and grief you don't have to know how you just got to know who and you got to know that he's in control he hadn't given up control and he has not taken our eyes off of him and so what we want to do is we want to be a people that do not take our eyes off of him because he has not taken his eyes off of us amen so romans 8 37 nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us Verse 37 in the Amplified, yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. And so my key is to stay in Jesus. Amen. My key to success is not to figure out everything. How many know that's your key too? Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on, tell your neighbor, can't nobody else help you? 
All right, tell them one more thing. Say, they do not have the answers. They do not have the answers. All right, so let us be those people that truly keep our eyes stayed on the Lord. Amen. We're going to keep our eyes stayed on the Lord. Uh, let's look in Psalm, go to the book of Psalm. Uh, we're going to look at Psalms, uh, let's see, Psalm 121. Psalm 121. And I just quoted it, but I want us to see it with our own eyes so we know what we're doing here. Psalm 121, verse 1. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Where's your help coming from? Ah, but you got to lift your eyes up. So the question is, what are you looking at? In a situation, what are you looking at? Are you looking at your problem? Are you looking at even your feelings? Or are you looking to your help? And this is what God, see, this is how we can benefit from being more than a conqueror. Because if you're not looking unto God, then that means you're still trying to conquer it yourself. That means you're still trying to figure it out. So you're trying to come up with a solution. But I'm going to look unto the hills. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. This is the God I'm looking to. How many know he's capable of fixing your situation? Amen. Come on. He is capable of helping you. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So that means God's never going to stop keeping you. Amen. So see, you are able to experience a victory that is almost unexplainable. Because I went on the earth. But then when I leave here. I go on the greater victory. Amen. Come on. Can I get amen right there? See, so I, I win in the earth realm. The devil can't stop me down here. And then he's just, you know what? He's jealous because when I leave here, I'm going on to heaven. And so this is a victory. And so we have to be these people that say, well, I'm going to keep my eyes on God. I'm not going to let myself be distracted. Amen. I'm not. That was what happened with Stephen. He didn't get distracted. So, you know, I'm facing some tough situations right now, but he didn't get distracted. He kept his eyes on God because that's where his help was coming from. And that's where your help is coming from. And so you got to keep your eyes stayed on your God. Amen. Even in the midst of difficult times and even when you don't understand. Amen. Boy, this one right here was, you know, having to say goodbye to Sister Woman was something I didn't understand. I didn't get it. I said, this ain't supposed to happen like this. But you know what? Thank you, Sister Mietta. She sent me an encouraging text because, you know, sometimes, sometimes people think pastors are like superheroes. Just so y'all know, we didn't get that. We don't have on an armored suit. Amen. And so she reminded me of how I encouraged her when we had to say goodbye for now to Sister Tish. And so... She sent me the scripture that we're supposed to trust in the Lord. And it's good, you know, because you send it out, you get it back. Amen. And so let's look at that real quick. Proverbs 3. So even when you don't understand. Proverbs 3. Verse 5. We're going to trust in the Lord. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to trust him no matter what. Look back at your neighbor and say, I'm never going to stop trusting him. Look back and say, he knows what he's doing. All right. So, you know, that's what we do. We trust God. He says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. See, and when we find ourselves leaning on our, under, our own understanding, it's difficult. It, you know, it, it becomes very disappointing because you don't find any answers. <laughs> hey, man, you ever done that where you say, well, you know, let me hold on. I'm going to step back and figure this out. And you step back and try to figure it out and you get frustrated because you're not getting no answers. I said, you don't have it. It's with me. So that's why you have to trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto their own understanding. 
in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And so that's why we do stuff. You know, how long we've been doing this radical praise and all this stuff? You know, I didn't know that anything like this would be happening, but how many know we were already praising? Imagine this. You get hit with something like losing someone very important to you, but you're not a radical praiser. No, you, you're not dedicated. Now you're going to try to deal with that and you see, but we already trained up. Hey Amen. We already trained up. We already do this, man. We're going to praise God no matter what. No matter what the situation looks like, we're going to have our praise go forth to our God because a situation may change. Something may come that's difficult, but God never changes. He's the same God that we were worshiping last week. He's the same God. Come on, we were worshiping when Sister Wilma was here with us up on this stage. He's the same God. He ain't changed, and so we ain't going to change. And we're going to keep praising him as long as we're here and we've been given a chance to do so. Now, through this series, we've been looking at the way of Jesus versus the way of man. Jesus always trusted the Father. I mean, I believe Jesus went through some tough times. But he always trusted the Father. He never doubted him. He always trusted him. And he gives us that example. Now, I want us to go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. We'll look at 1 Peter chapter 1. Let me get there and make sure. 1 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 3. And I want to look at this in the NLT. Just receive some strength from heaven for us. First Peter. Let me see. Chapter 1, verse 3. Make sure I've got it. Yep. In verse 3 in the NLT, and you can just, if you don't have an NLT, you can look up on the board. But it says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Amen? So if I can just stop right there, I mean, that right there is enough for you to praise God. Because it's by his mercy that you've been born again. That means you're saved. You're not on your way to hell. You're on your way to heaven. Amen? And so it's by his mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. How many of y'all live with great expectation? I'm talking about I live with great expectation because I know that I'm going to go from glory to glory and God has made a way for me. There, I don't have to be wondering about where I'm heading. I know where I'm going. And I want to share this with as many people as I possibly can. You know, the devil will try to get on you, man. He'll try to say, you know, you're speaking all that faith. You're doing all this stuff. And, and look at that. You know, you, you lose one of your members and, you know, somebody that. And he, he knows, the devil knows what he's doing. He's very strategic. But the problem with that is I win. Because. I know where Sister Wilma is. And so when we can rest in that and we can say, devil, you still lose. We know where we're going and we're going to teach people to live their lives in a way that will secure their eternity. Don't live your life where there's a question mark as to where you will go. Because let me tell you, I'm one of those pastors that tells the truth. And so if I do a funeral and I don't know where that person is, I am not under the deception that everybody that dies goes to heaven. I don't believe it. I am resting comfortably in knowing where you are based on the life you lived in front of me. I know what kind of life Sister Wilma lived, so I know where she's at. And so I have great peace. Amen. 
But let us all live our lives this way. And let us all take advantage of the opportunities that we've been given. Let's never take the things of God as unimportant. Show up, maybe not, da 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 No, because we want to make sure that we make this life count. And I want this life to give me a good eternity. Amen? Because this is my proving ground. And let me, let's continue with that scripture, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. I think we were, yeah, verse 3. Okay, we got that expectation. Now go to verse 4. And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. I'm telling you, this right here is to motivate you to live right while you have time, because you have a reward, you have an inheritance, you have something that cannot, come on, be changed or even corrupted, decayed. It's something that's reserved for you. How many know, I'm, you, you got to be a person that says, I'm, I'm receiving all of my stuff. Come on, glory to God, I'm getting all my stuff, amen? I, and I don't believe we got to wait to heaven and get it. I believe we could have it manifesting on the earth, but we've got to keep our eyes stayed on where we're going so that we don't mess up along the way because you, some people, they get sidetracked. And they get sidetracked and they don't know that eternity could be real close to them. But if eternity shows up on you, you ain't going to be able to get ready. The state you die in is the state you stay in. Ain't going to be no corrections made after that. Amen. You're going to be received or rejected based on what kind of life you chose to live. So I say. Let's be received on the glory. But if I'm living for God in the earth, then the way I'm living should even be attracting others to him. If I am following God and living the way of Jesus always trust in the Father, then I should be actually attracting people not to myself but to my God, to where they want to know my God because they see him in me. They want to know my God because they see evidence, y'all with me, evidence of his presence in my life. The world is looking at you. They want to know how you handle tough things. They want to know, are you fickle? Are you committed? You know, are you a fair weather Christian? I'm going to tell you right now, we are not a fair weather church. We're going to stand and we're going to keep speaking, professing, believing, doing everything we've been doing. No matter what we face, we're going to stay the course. We still going to be speaking life, speaking long life. We're going to still speak it all. Because God ain't given us nothing else that we can do. Amen. Amen. Because we believe this stuff before any situation ever came about. And we're going to keep believing it. Amen. And we're going to keep speaking it and professing it. And giving glory unto God. Can you put that scripture up there again? Verse 4. So our inheritance is incorruptible and we know this. And it will not change or decay. Uh, verse 5. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation. Through your faith. Somebody say, through my faith. See, through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. You want to be a person that understands that you are kept. God is keeping me. My faith in God is keeping me in this earth. He, matter of fact, God is the one that's keeping me saved. God is the one that's keeping me saved. I don't believe that you can say a prayer when you were three years old and expect that to, that to last for you. And ever since three, you've been living like a heathen. I don't believe in that kind of uh, 
salvation. That's fairy tale salvation. I believe in the salvation that brings a change with it. I believe in the salvation that God can use me in the earth and somebody can see me that used to know me and say, well, man, you have changed. Amen. Come on. I don't believe in that salvation that has you continuing to make excuses for your sin. Get your stuff together, man. Quit playing. Yes. Who got time for that? Let's live a life that is securing our eternity. That we know when we leave, we know where we're going. Amen. Now, we, all, all we got is the word, so that's what we believe. So I believe we got a long life. I'm still professing. I'm getting my 120 years. Yes. Amen? You can profess what you want to profess, but I'm still believing. I'm getting, because Genesis 6, 3 says the years of a man are 120. I don't care what's going on. I'm getting my 120. That's my, that's my confession. Right. Amen? But let this life that I'm living let it be a life that's pleasing to my God. Because we also have the rapture, which can show up and nobody knows when that's going to happen. So I'm I'm you know, this is you know, I'm always saying stay ready because you can't get ready. I'm really mean it on this one, church. Stay ready. Because you ain't going to be able to get, you know, you ain't going to have time to get ready. Don't let the devil trick you into all this stuff. You know, there's so many distractions that come about. We've had a lot of that, you know, just I said, man, are you guys? And I'm so glad that I didn't let nobody pull me off course. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. I, I wouldn't be able to handle something like this if I wasn't stayed, glory to God. If I wasn't grounded and rooted, I wouldn't be able to handle no stuff like this. But I'm stayed in that word. I don't let these distractions pull me and take my eyes off my king. And therefore, I'm ready. I'm ready to do business in the earth and I'm ready to meet him whenever he says. You know what I mean? And that's the way you want to live your life. But remember, it's your faith, your faith in God. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so you got to trust God. Come on, you got to know he's there when you can't see him. Come on, you got to know he's there when you can't feel him. Come on, how about when you can't feel him, but you still know he's there? You don't know how, but you know who. God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation. This is that final until he, he receives you home, which is ready to be revealed in the last day for all to see. Next verse, please. So be truly glad. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to get real glad. Be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. You believe it? Even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. Trial is almost a bad word in church. Christians don't like to hear about no trial. They don't want to have to go through nothing. Come on, but how many know when you go through, sometimes that gets you on another level, amen? Come on, sometimes when you go through a little fire, come on, you come out refined. Come on, you come out with a shine that you wouldn't have had on you if you had not gone through. Now, I'm not saying camp out and stay there. Go on through. He says there, you may have to endure many trials for a little while. Next verse. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. When I see people retreat, when they're going through something difficult, and I see them blame God, who's the one that saved them in the first place, who's the one that delivered them, come on, when they blame God and retreat from God, go over to God. When we go through something, the first place we should go is church. Soon as church is open, we should be there. Praising God, we should be running to God because that is going to show that your faith is genuine. I'm not going to have no counterfeit faith. I got faith in God, but I'm going through some. I, I don't call nobody back. I don't call none of the brothers from the church. I'm just, you know, I got to be left alone because your faith is a counterfeit and you need to get some real faith. People that got real faith never retreat from the things of God. 
Never. I'm saying this with passion tonight because we have done an experience. I didn't experience my fair share of fickle Christians. I have experienced all that I can almost take. And I feel like telling people, you better choose what God you're going to serve. Amen. He says, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm spitting you out of my mouth. We're going to have this. Man, I'm going to just decree it. This church is full of fire. Come on. We got firecrackers up in here. We glory to God. This is the church where nobody's on the fence. We don't have no fence. We kick the fence down. Amen. Come on. Man, y'all be surprised, man. I to, you don't know what I got to deal with as a pastor. I'm like, man, you guys, I'm in a clown sock, man. I just want to pay you. Amen. Because at the end of the day, what really matters is your walk with God. Your walk with God is all that's going to matter. Your walk with God, your relationship with God, when you have to stand before him, that's all you got. Yes. You ain't going to be able to bring my name up in that situation. Right. It's going to be you and your God. And that's all you got. But don't wait until you're standing before him to realize how important that is. Live that way now. Amen? Come on. Look at your name and say, my, my faith is for real. Come on, look at him and say, I ain't one of them moody Christians. Man. Hot and cold for God, just turning on him. Stuff go wrong, I just, y'all yeah, know. I don't know. Because you never knew. Get saved. Oh, I got time for that, man. Is saved. Praise God. So these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than gold than mere gold. Next verse. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor. On the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. See, we got to be those people that got that strong faith. That enduring faith. Come on, next verse. You love him. How many of y'all? Does this apply to you? Come on, I told you now. We're not going to be these fickle Christians. You love him even though you have never seen him. Yeah, you might have seen a picture of Jesus and you might have had a vision, but you have not seen him in the physical form. But yet you love him and you done changed your whole life around to please him and you ain't never seen him. That's because you're doing this by faith. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice. Come on, this is us right here, church. This is us. You rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. I'm talking about joy unspeakable. This is what we got going on up in here. Joy unspeakable. Look at that verse 8 in the King James real quick. King James. I know I flipped that one real fast, but King James verse 8. Because this is what we have. It's almost so good that we can't express it. We hadn't seen him, but we still love him. Yet believing. Somebody say, I'm a believer. So because you're a believer, here's what you do. You rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. That's what you got, amen? You got joy unspeakable. It's almost like it doesn't mean you can't say anything, but it's like you can't explain it. We can add that revelation to that scripture. So why are you so happy? And you just went through something. I mean, you just got notified of some bad news. What you doing? Satan is like, aren't you supposed to be bought up in a corner somewhere? Then you said, that's what I would have done if I wasn't saved. 
but now I got the power of salvation on me that don't let me stay curled up. It gets me up on my feet. Glory to God. It don't let my hands stay down. That power of God, that power of salvation that's on the inside of me lifts my hands without me trying to lift them. See what I mean? Y'all see where this is coming from? I had to dig, man. I was just hard. That's the thing. That's why sometimes these pastors aren't, aren't doing that good because they can't relate to nobody. I ain't living off on no, in no compound. Amen. I preach about stuff that can help me. Glory to God. I'm a pastor in need of God's help. So I'm not preaching from I've arrived. I'm preaching from I'm right there with you. I'm on, I'm on this walk with you. Come on, let's take the hill. Amen. I didn't get no helicopter. I got to just walk it up like you got to walk up. So how about we help each other? All these people trying to make it like, well, you know, I'm just so that's not me. I, I'm getting help daily. I'm I'm drawing from the water. Amen. I'm going. Come on. I'm thirsty. That's why I keep going back. Amen. And that's why I don't give you no dried up message. Amen. Because I'm going to get the water for myself. I'm over there drinking. Amen. And then I give you what God's been giving me. That's why it's always fresh. That's why you don't get no tired, wore out messages up in here. That's why I don't come up in here just lackluster. Just, you know. Well, tonight uh, we're going to uh, look at the book of, um, yes, Deuteronomy. <laughs> Ain't nobody got, you know, I would turn me off. I would click me off. Amen. Ain't nobody got time for that. I want something that's working. Amen. And so we can rejoice, amen? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I can rejoice. I can rejoice. Man, see, you can rejoice because you know who you are in, in God. You know who you're trusting. You know who you believe in. You know where you're going. You can rejoice, and you can have a joy that's unspeakable. God will give you power to rejoice in the midst of pain. God will give you power to rejoice in the midst of sadness. Come on, somebody. God will give you joy to rejoice in the midst of disappointment. It didn't turn out like you wanted it to, but you still got to praise. Because you're not counterfeit. You ain't fickle. You ain't fair, fair weather. Matter of fact, your praise changes the weather. Amen? Come on, your, your praise changes atmospheres we change atmospheres we change situations we step in the depression come on and bring joy we bring the joy of the lord with us. the joy of the lord is our strength amen and we come up in there in his presence is the fullness of joy so when i'm in the fullness of joy it can overflow get some sad people happy amen just because you showed up and jesus came with you y'all with me that's what we're here to do. Make a difference. Make a difference. Amen. We can just be excited about this. Now go to Nehemiah before I close. I got to give you this. Now this right here, man, is I'm only giving you this because this helped me. Now I've already told you I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a real person. I was like, Lord, I'm, a, I'm struggling. <laughs> this morning I was like, whoo. But, you know, I have learned to go to the source. Amen. When I need help, come on. I ain't trying to find out what they're talking about in the secular world. Amen. I'm going to the source. I'm going to the word, the living word. God, you're going to have to give me a word on it. Because ain't nothing else going to help. And God just blessed me. Lifted me up. Nehemiah 8.10. Let's look at this. Nehemiah we're going to look at it in the Amplified. I just got to share this, and we're going to just close on a high note full of joy. And, and you know, make a commitment to praising. You know what I mean? How many of y'all going to make a commitment? Say, you know, I'm, I ain't, I'm not letting anything steal my joy. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to even get more radical with my praise. 
Amen? I'm going to get more radical with my praise. See, so that's what you got to do. You got to shame the devil. You got to shut him down. You got to shut him down. Let him know he don't prevail against you. All right. So Nehemiah 8.10 in the Amplified Classic Edition. Then this is Ezra. I'll just give you a little backdrop on this. Ezra was bringing the word to the people. And, you know, he was up on the pulpit. He had all this stuff. But, you know, the, the word was bringing correction. And the people were like, oh, man. But then he had to remind them that there was some joy that they had access to. And this helped me because if you go to the word, you think you're reading the word, but the word will read you. But if the word reads you, it's never going to read you to condemn you. It's going to read you to convict you to where you will go ahead and get some help. Amen. Come on. That conviction will let you know that hurts. Can I get some help? Amen. Now, people that stay in denial aren't in the word. You have to pick which one you want to be in, denial or the word, because you get in the word, you're going to come up out of de denial. Amen. You start reading the, the truth, the truth's going to change you. Because you surely ain't going to change it. Amen. And so then Ezra told them, go your way. Eat the fat, drink the sweet. And send portions to them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day, somebody say this day. So what day are we talking about? I'm talking about every day. Go over to God. They, they, yep, the day you're going through something. You know, the God used this to remind me. Yeah, you, you know, you feeling a little blue right now, but this day I made it. This day is holy to our Lord. Next verse. And be not grieved. Come on, somebody. Be not grieved and depressed. For the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. And let me give you some revelation that God gave me on this. God's joy is my strength. But this word stronghold means a well-fortified place, a fortress. And so God's joy is a fortress for us, surrounding and protecting us. Come on, preserving us until we reach our final destination. Come on, I'm going to stay in the fortress that God has put around me. That way the sorrow of this world, the lack of faith in this world cannot move me. It cannot penetrate me because I am in the fortress of his joy. His joy is a stronghold. Man, isn't that powerful? His joy is a stronghold. A well-fortified place. Come on, how many of y'all want to camp out in his joy? Amen. Amen, you know what I mean? Just say, you know, I'm going to go ahead. and Now, we don't build our tents in our trial. But how I many know we need to build a tent in the joy of the Lord? Say, I'm going to just, well, you know, I kind of like this. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay right here. Amen. That's like back in the day, the settlers without moving around, seeing they said, well, I, I like this. Let's stay right here. We need to stay right there as a people and obey the word. Now, I just gave it to you so you can take that. And so we're dealing with, you know, saying goodbye to Sister Wilma as a church. But you can take this word and apply it to anything you're facing. Anything that comes your way, you got to fall back on the joy of the Lord. You got to say, hold on. Wait a minute. I was about to get depressed, but then I realized where my tent was. I realize that I am in my fortress. God's joy is a fortress around me. It's a well-fortified place. This is ground I can stand on. And I will not be moved. Amen? Ain't about to be no depression. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm, I'm not about to be grieved. No, no, no. Because I got the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. And you know what? That strength is what I need. Keep going. How many of y'all want him to say, well done? When I get there, man, when I get to heaven, I want to be emptied out. I want to have nothing left. I want to get up in there, man, and just, I got nothing left. And God says, well, 
You did everything I told you to do. I mean, ain't nothing, there wasn't nothing left for you to do. That's why I got you up here now. That's the way I want to enter in. And so in order to stay focused on the things of God, you got to stay in that fortress. His joy is your strength. It's your stronghold. Come on, how many know you? You'll take those handcuffs. You're talking about cuff me up, Jesus. Cuff me up, man. Don't let me go, amen. I'm just, I'll take those. That's a stronghold, amen? And so we need to learn of God, learn of his ways and, and be yoked up with him and stay with him and receive the joy that's unspeakable, amen? You can't explain how, but you know who. And you're going to keep loving him and sharing him with the world. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap, amen? <laughs> Praise God. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for meeting us here tonight, thank you for releasing your truth. I thank you for giving us joy unspeakable. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we shall not be depressed, that we shall not grieve, but we're going to rejoice in you because we know you're our keeper. We're going to keep our eyes stayed on you no matter what situations we face. Maybe you're watching us right now and you don't know Jesus as Lord. And maybe you would say within yourself, you want to come to that place so that you would know for sure that your eternity is secure. Well, what you have to do is receive him in your heart. He's knocking at the door of your heart. If you would just open, he'd come in, stay with you, and build you up. But you got to let him in. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone, no matter where they are, whoever hears this message, they would know how to receive Jesus as Lord, repeat after me, Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet, amen. Come on. Let's walk out of here on top. Amen. And let's stay on top. We got things to do. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we're going to stay full of joy. And we're going to stay strong. Amen. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, just bless this your people. Strengthen them and empower them. Lord, as we leave this place, go with us. And continue to minister to us in a very personal way. And we ask, Lord, that you would also continue to surround us with favor as with a shield. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs>